So friends, now we have with us uh, Mr. Safari Kiti, the National Executive Chairman of the Association of Kenya Medical Laboratory Scientific Officers. Mr. Kiti has served as a sub-country uh, medical laboratory coordinator, a lecturer at a private medical training college known as the Outspun Medical College in Neri. He has a bachelor's degree in medical laboratory sciences and has served on various positions in the association and is a known advocate of absolute professionalism in Kenya. May I request Mr. Safari Kithi, the National Executive Chairman of Association of Kenya Medical Laboratory Scientific Officers, for his address, please. Mr. Kithi, uh, back office, can you please unmute uh, Mr. Kithi, please? I think he has got some connection issue because he was, he was there. Yeah, he was just there before a minute. Now I cannot see him. Yeah. Uh, so look, let me uh, go to the next uh, yeah, yeah, please. Uh, speaker and then we'll take Mr. Keithy later. Right, fine. Fine. Uh, considered to be one of the very tall leaders of the world today. Mr. Narendra Modi, Honorable Prime Minister of India, introduced the Ayushman Bharat, the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, or the Prime Minister's Public Health Scheme, a very ambitious initiative with a whooping government spend on improving public health infrastructure and providing affordable health care treatment to all citizens of the country. We are happy that we have with us Dr. J. L. Meena, the Joint Director of Ayushman Bharat Scheme of the National Health Authority Government of India for the keynote address today. Dr. Meena has been working in the field of quality health care since 2002 and has a wide experience of working from the bottommost grassroots level primary health care centers in India to the top level John Hopkins University, USA. He is credited with introducing quality certifications in hospitals and has immensely contributed in preparing quality standards for various kinds of organizations in the healthcare sector in India. He created history by getting a number of government facilities accredited under these quality standards during his tenures at various locations at different levels and has been honored with special several special awards in his career. He contributes as an expert on numerous government committees on quality assurance and standards. May I invite Dr. J. L. Meena to give his keynote address, please. Dr. J. L. Meena, back office requesting you to kindly unmute Dr. Meena, please. Yeah, thank you, Joshi sir and uh, Panda sir and uh, all organization for this excellent events. Uh, I think so, this is very important events, especially for the safety of the uh, healthcare workers. And uh, today's my main lecture on the infection control practices. When we say for the infection control measure, I think so the prevention and control of the infection is the responsibility of each and every healthcare providers. Because each and every healthcare provider is responsible for the infection control practices. And that's why in the developing the hospital infection control program is very necessary to prevent the infection. If you see the infection control practices in the hospitals, the first is important is the standard precautions. To maintain the standard precautions. The second important thing is the safe injection practices. The third important thing is the sterilization and disinfection practices. The fourth is the biomedical waste management, which is also a crucial role for the infection control practices. Third and fifth is the healthcare worker safety. Our main important is the healthcare worker safety as well as our patient and relative safety. The prevention of the healthcare associated infection is also main role for the infection control practices. And last but not least, the safe infusions, maybe a IV or ventilation is also very important things. And this is the key role of the infection control in the hospitals. The infection control program, which contain the infection control manuals, the uh, so first, your hospital should be prepared the infection control manuals, which contain the standard additional precautions and the standard operation procedures. The important thing is the training, training, and trainings. 
the training to our healthcare providers first youth and need based assessments for the trainings to the doctors to the nursing staff to the housekeeping staff to the securities and the protection of the healthcare worker is very important role for the infection control programs the surveillance activity and incident monitoring is also important role for the infection control programs practices and aseptic technique use the aseptic technique during the injection practices isolation of the patient is very important kiron especially in during the pandemic situations use of the single use of the devices and reprocessing of the instrument equipment is also very important role for the infection control programs the develop the antimicrobial steroids and outbreak investigations the proper biomedical waste management and environment management practice include the supportive services like the management of the food and linen management also when we say for the infection control program i think infection control programs need two levels especially as the one is the infection control committees another is the infection control teams the infection control team is the routine teams which is daily monitoring and infection control committee is the high level committees which is just a advisory body for the hospital to prevent the infection control practices the role of the infection control committee is very crucial for the prevent infections the first role is the plan how you plan for infection control practices the review and approve the plan for the infection control practices the review approve the infection control policies the role of the infection control committee support the infection control team and direct resource to address the problems as the identifications to ensure the availability of the appropriate supplies and the review the epidemiological surveillance data and identify area of the interventions for the infection control practices our infection control committee is also role for the improve the practices because when we say for the quality quality is the endless process and it's a continuous improvement process and that's why improved practices is also key role for the infection control committee the training is also very important role training before you give the trainings you identify the need based assessment of the trainings what training need to the doctors what training need to the nursing staff what training need to the housekeeping staff so accordingly you give the trainings and training training and trainings it's a very uh, good practices for the improvements the review the risk management when you review the risk management it's also very important for the key role for the infection control practices and outbreak investigations you root cause analysis and then kappa you do for the infection control practices the community and corporate the other committees also like the antiviral committee occupational hazard committee and quality assurance committees the infection control team is the daily monitoring team which include doctors maybe infection control nurses and microbiologist and the infection control team is also responsible for the day to day running of the infection control practices and a daily round is also necessary by the infection control team which is the high risk area where the infection is more well, first is the operation theater is very high risk area all the intensive care units icu hemodialysis unit hdu post operative ward interventional radiologies blood bank cssd tssu dialysis warn unit delivery room endoscopy unit isolation units and procedure rooms and uh, nowadays the pandemic situation is there so where uh, ward of the covid 19 is also very high risk area the high risk procedure is also the, like the angioplasty angiography blood transfusion reactions a uh, one marrow biopsy dialysis deliveries endoscopy surgery and ultrasound guide biopsies they are the high risk procedures where the infection control practices is required more the standard precautions like the hand hygiene i think it's very important things if you prevent more than 85% infections due to the proper hand washing practices use of the gloves is also very important for the standard precautions to prevent the infections the use of the gown use of the mask eye protection or face shields and safe injection practices is also very important role for the infection control practices uh, clean your hand when you clean uh, through normal hand you just see that your hand is clean but when you see through the uh, fluorescence your some part of the area is contain the microbes and that's why you need the proper hand washing practices like the back side front side some area which is remaining and not properly clean so the practice of the hand washing is very important the proper hand washing practices control your 85% infections like the hand washing practices the hand wash 
properly hand wash according to the plain soap and waters the antiseptic hand washings end with the soap having the antiseptic agents and water antiseptic hand rub typically the alcohol based apply the antiseptic hand rub to all surface of the hand to reduce the micro ingestion the skin flora the transient flora the clonus is superficial layer and more amenable to the removals and the residential flora attached to the deeper layer of the more resistance to the removals is the hand hygiene practices also very important the five moment where the hand washing practices is very important like the first is the before touching a patient second is the before cleaning or aseptic precautions third is the after body fluid exposure or risk fourth is the after touching a patient and fifth is the after touching patients of the surroundings the step of the proper hand washing practices as you know the six step is there palm to palm each palm over each dorsum palm to palm figures four back of the figures oppositional palms and rotate the palms and rotational rubbers the one is the step of hand washing practices another is also very important for the surgical hand washing practices the seven step of the surgical hand washing practices like the removal of the all jewelries wet your hands and forearm thoroughly the clean under each pigments with the sticks or brush hold your hand rubs above elbow levels and apply antiseptic in the circular motions finger trips to elbow repeat for the second hand and continue in this way to the 3 to 4 minutes the fifth steps hold your hands above elbow and rinse the finger tip first and each arm separately the sixth step use the sterile towels dry your arms from the finger tip to elbow and use different side of the towels on each arms and keep hand above the wrist levels do not touch anything put on sterile gloves so step of the surgical hand washing is also very important before you proceed to the surgical hand washings and that's why the hand hygiene is the simplest most effective measure for prevent hospital acquired infection and as you know the 85% infection is prevent due to the proper hand washing practices and that's why we need proper hand washing practices according to the properly steps the second important part is the injection safety for the risk one needle one syringe and only one times it's a very important role to prevent the infection injection safety the magnitude of unsafe injection why it's happen the one third carrier of potential risk of the transmission of the blood borne virus if you are unsafe injection practices is there you infected through the hepatitis b hepatitis others and other blood borne viruses unsafe injections due to the faulty technique was observed in 53.1% faulty technique it's also very important key role for the unsafe injections that together this two factor at the country level made nearly two third of the injection is unsafe and that's why what is safe injection practices does not harm the recipient does not expose the healthcare workers or to any risk and does not result in the best interest to the communities it's the safe injection practices like the rejo reuse of the equipments during the unsafe collection unsafe disposals so they are the main important for the safe injection practices how to make injection safety to the patient the important is the one syringe one needle and one times the use of the correct gauge and length of the needle required for the injections use correct size depending on the volume and age of the patients for delivering the injection use correct angle of the insertion of the needle depending on the route of the administration check expiry date of the drug and vaccine before using them on the patients and make sure that the vial or ampules contain the right drug in the appropriate strength and dash for the patients and proper storage of the drugs is very important role for the safe injection practices how you make to injection safe to healthcare professionals the avoid needle stick injury we need smart do not recap rebend remove transport or reuse needles use needle stick injury prevention equipment is very important ensure that all healthcare provider in the health facility are immunized with three doses of the hepatitis b vaccines and train all healthcare workers in the awareness of the needle stick injury post exposure prophylaxis should be mandatory and handed the hospital in case of the nsi the how to make injections safe to the community hazard of needle waste management need to be secured this is possible by the bring the awareness among the healthcare workers communities about the potential hazard of the surface minimize the segregation and decontaminations and disinfections the hazard is waste use the sarp containers that prevent injury to the healthcare workers or destroy user items to prevent their reuse 
and uh, the third most important is the cleaning of the disinfection and sterilizations. As you like, the definition of the sterilization describes a process that destroys or eliminates all form of the microbial lives and is carried out in the healthcare facility by the physical or chemical method, stream under the pressures, dry heat, etios gas, hydrogen peroxide gas plasma, and liquid chemicals are the principal sterilization that is used in the healthcare facilities. The disinfection is described as the process that eliminated many of all the pathogenic microorganisms except bacterial spores and inanimate objects in healthcare settings, object usually for the disinfection while liquid chemicals or wet pasteurizations. The high level disinfection is required in defining the complete examination of all microorganisms in or on the instrument except for the small number of the bacterial spores. For FDA definition, the high level disinfection is a sterilant use of the shorter content time to achieve as the 6 log 10 kilo of an appropriate mycobacterium species. The cleaning is the removal of the visual soils, example of the organic or inorganic materials from the objective and surface and normally in an account manually or mechanism using water with detergent or enzyme processors. The decontaminations remove the pathogens or microorganisms from the object so that are safe to handle use of the discarded. The germicide is an agent that can kill microorganisms, particularly the pathogenic organism or antiseptic are germicide applied to the living tissue and skins. The disinfections are antimicrobial applied only to eliminate the object. So disinfection and sterilization practice is very important role for the infection control practices in your hospitals. Split of the classification like the critical and semi-critical and non-criticals. The recommended practice, like if you have contaminated devices there, first you clean, then rinse or flush, then dry, then pack, then disinfection or sterile, and after that monitoring properly. And this is the safe device, no infections. is very important role for the recommendation of the practices. How the instrument cleaning process? The stage first is the soak and wipe with the damp cloth at point of use to prevent drying or boil soils on the instrument. The second step is the ultrasonic washers with the enzyme detergent or complex instrument or at a sink or the automatically washer with the enzymatic detergents is the second step. The third step, the rinse with the large amount of the water. The fourth step, the soak in the high level disinfectants like the cultural dry or semi-critical items or the dry and pack for the stem or EO for the critical items or store of the future use of the non-critical items and the fifth step rinse with the sterile or ultra clinic waters. Use of the equipment control, the wide test negative is there, wide test positive, you see the wide test also for control of infection control practices. The exposure controls, the in external chemical indicator as well as the internal chemical indicators. The use of the outside of the each package unless the internal chemical indicator is visible. If not changed on, use the package. It's very important things for control of the infection control practices. The load control, the biological indicators. Biological indicators, weekly to every load recommendations as for the daily. Biological indicators in every load that contain an implementable device, a quarantine units like the VI units of the negatives. Biological indicators is every load for the ATOs is also used. The important role for the infection control practices is the antibiotic policies. So your hospital should be prepared proper antibiotic policy. And that's why the antibiotic committee's requirement, antibiotic resistance, antibioma or antibiograms also needed and adherence to the antibiotic policies. Same is the important thing to the antibiotic programs like the leadership, the commitment, the committee is required, the accountability of the single leader responsible for the program, the drug expertise, like the pharmacist is also required in the antibiotic policies. The action at least one recommended action such as the antibiotic times out after the 48 hours and tracking, monitoring the antibiotic prescription and resistant patterns and the reporting of the antibiotic use and resistant to the doctors, nurse and relevant staff and education, education the clinicians about the resistance and optimal prescriptions. And uh, it's very important by the antibiotics policy and infection control committees. Laundry and linen management is also key role for the infection control practices. Some hospitals have the automated mechanism, laundry, washing mechanism, and tumble dryer and calendar mechanism. Solid linen, like the all linen that is contaminated with the blood, etc., 
other body fluids in place in the yellow laundry bags and clean after the disinfections. Same for the clean linen, the covered linen cart used to transport clean linen to the ward and unit and stored in the closed cupboards for prevent infections. The kitchen is also very important role for the infection control practices. The old food handlers should undergo regular medical examinations like the blood test, stool examination, urine examinations, and also immunized with the hepatitis B, typhoid vaccine, and tetanus toxoids, and also examination of the nail and hairs. The staff trained on the kitchen sanitation and safe handle of the food items and guidelines are provided. The appropriate post prophylaxis uh, PPE provided and checklist for the PPE maintained at the cafeteria is also very important roles. Engineering control is very important role for the infection control practices, especially in the high risk area, like in the operation theater, ICU, HDU. And the temperature should be maintained at the 21 plus minus three degrees and inside the OT in all times. The humidity, related humidity between the 40 to 60 percent. Air exchange per hour, like the 30 air exchange per hour, the fresh air is component of the air exchange in 14 air exchange out of the totals. And HEPA filter instrument, the major OTs, and air container at entrance of the MICU, OT, post operative, onco post operatives, and other high risk areas. The biosafety cabinet for preparation of the cytotoxic drugs is very important role. And over the hand tank schedules, schedules, formulation of the water filter services, and water testing every three months should properly. The housekeeping staff is also the disinfection and cleanliness of the solution used. Toilet cleaning checklist, cleaning protocols, pest control, spill management kit is also important. Mercury spill is kit, cytotoxic drugs, and uh, food uh, uh, blood spill is kits. Surveillance activity before you continuously, because when we say for the quality, quality is the continuous endless process. And that's why the surveillance activity is very important role for prevent infection or reduce the infection. The surveillance of the or healthcare associate infection like the central line associate blood stream infections, the catheter associate urinary tract infections, the ventilator associate pneumonia, the surgical site infection pneumonia, the wet source and the phlebitis and the hand hygiene compliance is very important for the doctors, for the nursing staff, for the housekeeping staff, the monitoring of the equipments for the sterilization and disinfections, the biomedical best practices and disposals and the surveillance of the healthcare worker safety like the needle stick injury, and blood and blood food, body fluid exposure to the healthcare workers. And periodic, periodic microbiological data for the lab to be evaluated properly. The biomedical waste management, when we say for the biomedical waste management, I think segregation, segregation, and segregation is the important and key role for the proper biomedical waste management. And segregation is the role of the all healthcare workers. At the site of the segregation, it's very important role. The authorizations through the pollution control board, the state pollution control board, or the central pollution control board, the segregation, collection, and disposal from the common biomedical waste facilities, the annual return and other reports, and the visit to the vendor sites, like the visit to the common biomedical waste facilities and use of the personal protective equipment also for the proper management of the biomedical waste management. The spill management kit, you should have the spill management kit and give the training to all healthcare workers. Other measures like the notifiable dye, which is the IDSP form and formats use use of the PPE, isolation and barrier nursing, and the pre and post exposure prophylaxis practices and outbreak management practices, the regular training on the infection control practices and budgeting for the infection control committees and infection control practices is also very important role for the prevent infections. I think thank you very much and thanks to all organizations to give this opportunities. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Meena, yeah. for uh, your very informative presentation on infection control. It was a very critical aspect in the healthcare sector at present. Yeah. There is a lot to be learned from you, and we are fortunate we have people like you in the government framework who push change and make things better for the benefit of people at large. Thank oh. you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.